Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Titus. He's going to tell you his story and a little bit about the Lotta Foundation, and then we're going to talk about the actual logistics of the challenge. Cool. Um, so for those of you that, are, that do not know me, my name is Titus Bartolotta. Uh This is always a cool moment for me. You never quite know if the, the childhood you have or the things you go through get to be a moment for someone else. You live your life in those moments, and then you never think that one day I'll tell someone else this and it'll be something cool for them. So it's really special for me to have your attention. Um, I grew up in New York City, and my mother and father were drug addicts. They made some decisions that didn't best suit the, uh, the interest of their future. Let's put it to you that way. They dropped out of high school. They decided not to get educated. And these two people with no education and a desire to party and do drugs constantly decided, I know how we can really add value to the world let's have a baby um, and have no money and no means to support this baby. So my parents did that. Well, my dad was abusive. And after my mom couldn't find glasses big enough to, to hide the, the, the black eyes, she, with no education, with no money, with no means, decided to leave. And that was really tough. It's tough today to do that. It was even more challenging uh, you know, almost 40 years ago to do that. And so that's what her decision was. My mom found herself struggling from couch to couch to backseat of car to backseat of car, abandoned building to abandoned building. And ultimately, after all of those stages, she cried out to God and she said, please save me. And she hasn't done drugs since. So what God has done for my mom is pretty cool. Now here's what, fast forward, when you cry out to God, when you make good decisions, it doesn't magically change your circumstances, right? Like you don't, your checking account doesn't just like go crazy when you decide to quit doing bad things. So we continue to struggle. And we continued to find uh, closed door after closed door in New York City. We thought that if we would travel to the Carolinas that we might have a better opportunity. But when you have nothing and you deal with poverty and homelessness, the cost of living doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about? Like if you don't have anything, then the cost of living being a little less doesn't matter. And that was our situation. So we came to the Carolinas and we struggled and we struggled and we struggled. And after my mom worked three part-time jobs and I found my second part-time job at the age of 15, Five part-time jobs together was enough to never be homeless or hungry or, or deal with poverty ever again. Uh, God is really good if you work hard enough, but it was never just my ability to work. Along the way, there were individuals that planted seeds into our life. Uh, they, they, we didn't know who these people were. They were strangers. But they knew that we needed a moment, and they kept trying to give us a moment. And how many people know that you get to sow, but you don't always get to reap, right? And these individuals had no clue that later on in life, that their seeds of love and hope would turn into uh, a, a handsome, attractive, amazing looking human. Um, they had no clue that that was gonna happen, but here's what happened. Um, I decided to work hard, get educated, be the first person in my family to graduate high school. I have multiple college degrees. Like I've invested my life in planting seeds in other people because a stranger said, you look hungry, here's a sandwich. Four years ago, we read that Mecklenburg County was among the worst in the whole country for this statistic. If you start off in poverty here, you die in poverty here. Nine-year-olds turn into 49-year-olds still struggling paycheck to paycheck and can't provide. After reading that four years ago and having just closed on a half a million dollar house that we built from the ground up and looking at our hardwood floors and our granite kitchen tops and all the goodness that God had given us, as our one-year-old crawled across the floor, ran across the floor, banged on the stainless steel refrigerator and said, milk, milk, because he knew there was milk in the refrigerator, my wife and I realized that we needed to do more. In fact, the amount we needed to do was a lot of more. And so we decided to start a charity, a 501c3, right here in our own backyard, because we were tired of our community being the worst when it comes to getting people out of poverty. Now, my last name is Bartolotta, which has never meant anything or been worth anything. Every Bartolotta had been locked up and incarcerated and screwed people over. But I thought a gift to give my children would be a last name that means love, hope, and always planting seeds of love. So we started the Lotta Foundation. Our mission is to do a lot of good. And we do that through our Lotta toys, Lotta coats, and Lotta food drives. We have helped over 6,000 individuals in the last four years with very little funding. But there are so many people in this community just like you that never stop giving. You never stop believing. And if you just have one toy, it brings a lot of joy. One meal brings a lot of uh, comfort and security. And just one of you signing up will bring us a whole lot of opportunity to do a lot of good in this community. 